On today's episode, we're talking about the inspiration for the gruesome final scene in the movie Fargo. Richard Crafts, who we're calling Mr. Woodchipper, killed his wife and disposed of her body by feeding it through, you guessed it, a wood chipper. We'll also play the Wheel of Death with two contestants. Woo! Woo! In this season one finale of Two Murder Morons. This podcast includes adult language and graphic depictions of murders and murder scenes. This is a comedy-style true crime podcast. We do our best not to make fun of victims or victims' families. However, we do introduce comedy while telling graphic stories. If the mix of comedy and true crime is not your thing, this may not be the right podcast for you. Audience discretion is advised. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. My name is Andy, and sitting across from me, as always, is my buddy Mike. Hello. <laughs> Are you running out of ways to say your name in the beginning? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. A L- little bit. Nah, nah, I just, I just, I don't know. I got thrown off since we have contestants today. Oh, we, d- yeah, we do. Yeah. We're all, we're, pun- and because this is the season one finale, we decided to go with two. Yep. The people, they're really, we're getting a lot of submissions to play the Wheel of Death, which yeah. I'm pumped about because I'm hoping this carries over. And we just, we're going to have one every episode now, yeah. is, is what I'm hoping. That'd be nice. Let's hope we don't go through like another lull of oh, nothing. We, we play it together just by ourselves. Right. <laughs> and just lose and over lose and over again. Burn, 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 we yeah. suck. Yeah. Uh, so, like we said, this is the season one finale. Sorry. Which. It doesn't mean anything. The show's not over. I know. We just, you know, we kind of wanted to break this up, up into seasons. I for, get it. I know. I know. It just sounds so bad, though. Now, like, it's I like the, a season one. the end of an era. Yeah. Yeah. Like we'll, a decade's over. We'll, we will be back. Yeah, we will be back. We will be back. Yeah, we'll be back. And even though we are taking a very short break before season two, now's a good time to bring up that if you are one of our Buy Me a Coffee members... Um, we are going to continue to do our bonus episodes yes, through yes, the break. Yes. So if you love us and you can't get enough of us, consider becoming a member. Yeah. Uh, little is three bucks a month. Uh, gets you all the bonus episodes and other goofy things that we, I don't know, sometimes we post Yeah. crime scene photos that other people aren't seeing and that kind of stuff on there. Yeah. So think about it. And I should say. And it helps us out. This is something. You know how I always told you I'd talk to you about stuff before we did it? Yeah. I just not realized I did something without talking to you. Uh-oh. But it's a benefit for the people listening. Okay. So our memberships on buymeacoffee.com, like the low one's three bucks a month, but I've set up yearly now. Oh, okay. Where you get two months free. Oh, okay. So yeah. you could get on there and pay 30 bucks. You'd get a full year of all the bonus episodes and stuff for 30 bucks. Oh, that's cool. And I did that for all the episodes, so... Or all the episodes, all the levels is all what levels. I'm saying. We have three different levels, and yeah. there's a yearly on there that saves you two months. That's cool. If you want to do it that way. All right. Well, yeah, cool. So consider becoming it's a— like day one. Didn't know shit. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> finding out God, new. Dang. I'm sorry. I don't know why I didn't. I think I'm with you. I was so excited that we had Wheel of Death people signed yeah, I up. I get it. I get it. That I was like, dang, like yeah. I, everything else went out the window. Yeah. Everything else. It happens. So we're playing with two. With two. I have another surprise for Uh-oh. you. This one you kind of know about, but we have a season two trailer. Oh, yeah. That we're going to have to play. Yep. So stay tuned to the end of this episode because at the end of the story, we're going to do two Wheel of Death contestants and we're going to play our season two trailer for the oh, very first there time. There we go. Like the world premiere of the season two trailer. Uh oh. Uh oh. And it is a masterpiece if I do say so myself. Well, of course. <laughs> You do kind of look like a deer in headlights right now. Like, yeah. like what's he going to say next? What, you never know. What's the next yeah. surprise yeah. coming? Just wait. You, yeah, just yeah, wait. Just wait. There's, more, there's no more surprises. Okay. Because what comes next is the thing you love the most, where I tell people, if you're listening to our show right now, yeah. and you want to see us and the stuff we're talking about, we're also a video podcast. So check us out on YouTube or Spotify to watch the episode. Good disclaimer. Thank you. And... You're so good at it. Well, it's not done yet. Oh, because right. if you're watching this right now right. and you'd rather listen, you can find us on all the major podcast platforms. Yes, and then make sure you uh, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. How how did I how did I do with my? Am I getting better at it? Yeah. Okay, I didn't get any eye rolls from you this time when I started. No, you didn't. Yeah. So hopefully. Well, I think it's because we have contestants. This is a whole different. 
<laughs> You're like, I don't care about any of this stuff. Yeah, we get to play Let's the game. Let's get to the wheel of yeah, death. I'm, yeah, I'm excited about that. Well, should we just dive right into the story then? Yeah, so let's we get it done We can get to the wheel of yeah, death. Let's get to it. So this here, this is Hel Nielsen, okay? And she marries Richard Crafts in 1975. Big and mistake. I'm... Well, she didn't. I mean, let's be fair, Mike. She I, didn't know, I know, I know. You know what's about to come with all this. I know. But they settled down in Newtown, Connecticut, in the United States. Hell continued working as a flight attendant while raising three children. In 1986, Hell began to suspect that Richard was engaged in an extramarital sexual activity and affair. Hmm. Never goes good. Never goes good. No. Here's an ID show right here. Uh, it's, yeah. It's, yep. <laughs> well, this goes way beyond well, goes an way beyond, I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she confronts him about her suspicions. Um, and I guess she found these suspicious long distance phone calls. Hmm. So there comes a point where she confronts him about it. And of course, that angers Richard. If, well, yeah, of course. So she goes and meets with a divorce attorney and hired a private investigator by the hmm. name of Keith Mayo. He comes into play later here. Yeah. Um, Keith Mayo, the investigator, he snapped photos of Richard kissing another flight attendant ah. outside her New Jersey residence. So he's banging people she worked with. <laughs> not only cheating, but had to go with someone in the same profession. Yeah, too. exactly. Like, well, I mean, he has a thing for flight attendants, I guess. Yeah. On November 18th, 1986, friends of hell dropped her off at the couple's uh, Newtown residence after she'd worked a long flight from Frankfurt, West Germany, back to the U.S. And she's never seen again. She disappears. Oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. That night, a snowstorm hits the area. The next morning, Richard said he was taking Hell and their children to his sister's house in Westport. When he arrived at his sister's house, Hell was not with them. Over the next few weeks, Richard gave Hell's friends a variety of stories as to why they were unable to reach her. Uh, he told them that she was visiting her mother in Denmark. She told them that she was visiting the Canary Islands with a friend. Um, or he would tell them that he just simply didn't know. I don't know where she's at. Because, yeah, ain't most husbands wouldn't know where their spouse is. Well, <laughs> well I know. Oh, you're, sarcasm. I, yeah, sarcasm. Yeah. Remember, I'm a smart ass, not a comedian. Well, and I apparently am a little slow on the uptick tonight. Yeah, I guess so. Um. Hell's friends were aware that Richard had a volatile temper and grew concerned. I think anybody would. Like, yeah, yeah if you haven't seen her, and he didn't know who she is. And he's coming up with all these weird yeah. excuses that are different and whatever. Yeah. They can't keep a story straight. Hell had actually told some of her friends before this, obviously, quote, if something happens to me, don't assume it was an accident. So she's telling her friends, yeah. if something happens to me, like, Mm -hmm. Look at my husband. Yeah, because she's found out about this affair. She's got a divorce attorney. What happens next? My most, I mean. Things can only go south. Every, every show you watch on ID, what happens? They get murdered. Right. So she, 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 knew, she knew something could happen. On December 1st, the private investigator, Keith Mayo, yep. reports her missing to Newtown Police. Because Richard did Yeah, because her husband's not going to. So the investigator's like, well, I haven't talked to her either. This is weird. Reports it to police. Richard Kraft was a known, well-known to the local police department for his work as a reserve police officer. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Yes. So he's a reserve volunteer police officer in Newtown. Um, and in 1986, Kraft was working as a part-time police officer in the nearby town of Southbury. Yeah. So they know this guy. Oh, yeah. They work with him. Yeah. According to Mayo, the investigator, Newtown police initially dismissed his concerns, saying that hell would probably return. Yep. That's what uh, they always say, though. Oh, yeah. Back then. Well, not even back then. I'm just like, he's a fellow cop, so they're yeah, like, eh, eh. she'll come back. She okay. went somewhere. Yeah, yeah. She's out. Yeah. She's yeah. out doing something. Yep. So convinced that Richard was involved in hell's disappearance, but unable to persuade local police to investigate it. Mayo took his findings to the county prosecutor. So the private investigator goes to the prosecutor, who eventually referred the case to the Connecticut State Police. Because the state police will probably do something. Right. Of course. And they don't have a connection to yeah, this they have no guy. Connection. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> On December 26, while Richard was vacationing with his children in Florida. So his wife is missing, and he's going on vacation with the kids. Yeah. Well, because she's at Denmark. Well, right. Supposedly. Yeah. 
So while he's in Florida with the kids, troopers search his home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Inside, they found pieces of carpet had been taken from the master bedroom floor. So there's literally carpet cut out of the master bedroom floor. That's a pretty good sign. Yeah. That's like, I feel like if I were to see that, it's like, oh, there's a bot. There's a mm -hmm. body somewhere. She's yeah. dead. Oh, yeah. There's got to be, yeah. you know. The family's nanny recalled that a dark grapefruit sized stain had appeared in an area of the carpet, which was later missing. There was also a blood smear on the side of the bed mattress. The forensic investigation was led by Henry Lee. We all know Henry Lee. Yeah. Right? Yep. Um, and because at the time he was an investigator for the state police, Correct. which I did not know that before mm. I read that. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Richard's credit card records showed several unusual purchases around the time hell vanished, including a freezer <laughs> that was not found in the house, uh -huh. bed sheets, a comforter, and the rental of a wood, wood chipper. Because again, everybody needs a wood chipper in the winter. Right? So what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do with a wood chipper in the middle of winter? Well, obviously, uh, we know what he did. Yeah. So among papers provided to a private investigator by Richard was a receipt for a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. The chainsaw was later found in Lake Zor, covered in hair and blood, which matched Hell's DNA. A key piece of evidence was provided by Joseph Hine, a local man who worked for the town of Southbury and drove a town snowplow <laughs> in the winter. On the night of November 18th, hours after Hell had been last seen, Hine was plowing the roads during the snowstorm when he noticed a rental truck with a wood chipper attached parked close to the shore of Lake Zor. Oh, okay. Which, like you just said, that's going to be odd. What the it hell? It would be a little odd, yeah. What the hell would you do with a wood chipper in the winter? I mean, you got a lot of paperwork you have to shred? <laughs> right. <laughs> in the lake? Yeah. Like, what's, yeah, what's, what's that thing? What's up there? It was only after the search of Kraft's house that Hine reported what he'd seen. So I think he thought it was odd, but it wasn't until... But it wasn't odd enough to report to the police. Right. Until he hears about there's a missing woman and, yeah. you know, now then he's police like... police is doing something. Uh, yeah. Maybe Hello. they should know about this yeah. thing that I saw. Yeah. So he leads detectives to the location where he saw it parked, where they examined the water's edge and found many small pieces of metal and some three ounces of human tissue. That's it. Yeah. Three ounces is not a... I mean, it's a tiny amount. It is. This included the crown of a tooth, DNA, a fingernail covered in pink nail polish, bone chips, 2,660 bleached blonde human hairs. So there's a lot of hair there. Oh, yeah. And O-type blood are found on the shore. Okay. Um, hmm. This led the police to conclude the remains had likely been fed through the wood chipper Richard had been seen towing behind the rental truck. I'm sure, yeah. Let's go find that wood chipper. Uh, exactly. Additionally, a chainsaw that contained traces of blood, human hair, um, and tissue was found underwater in the lake. It had been yeah. thrown out in the lake. Yeah. Though the serial number marking on the chainsaw was had been etched off. Etched off. The investigators restored the number in the laboratory. <laughs> the serial number on the tool was traced to the retailer whose records confirmed that Richard Crafts had purchased that chainsaw. Yeah. Who I I mean, this is crazy, but I, I I've never understand when people do stuff and they throw something important like that just in the water right there. Or why do they use their credit card to buy the shit? Well, that too. You but know? I mean, like just getting rid of evidence. Well, why yeah. wouldn't you drive that two states over yeah, and yeah, throw it in exactly. a lake? Why is it in the lake where you were right? Yeah. And why didn't you go two states over and use cash to buy it? Why go in your hometown? Right. Exactly. Where you're going to be on camera. <laughs> right. <laughs> you buying the stupid thing. I don't know. Just idiots. So here's the conclusion that investigators came to. So they concluded that Richard struck hell in the head with something blunt at least twice at home, staining the carpet yes, in the bedroom. caused the blood issue. Then he kept her body in the freezer for hours mm -hmm. until she was frozen solid. He cut her apart with the chainsaw into smaller which is, pieces. Which is easier. And then put the pieces through the wood chipper, probably projecting her fragmented remains into the truck and then shoveling them out onto the shore. Okay. They should just, well, I've just thrown them in the river. Yeah, like, we just shot the yeah, aim of the wood chipper out. So the wood chippers, yeah. 
I mean, that's what made more sense. Sick, but, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. So here, here's a little issue they run into, though. A, a prosecution for homicide at the time requires an official determination of death of the alleged victim. Okay. Right? Yeah. Typically, this is done by identification of a body, mm -hmm. which right. obviously this is not available. Correct. Just pieces. Right. With the help of a forensic dentist, the tooth crown found on the water's edge was positively matched to Hell's dental records. Okay. Which is crazy that that little piece, I'm, I'm envisioning this, you know, we've been to a lot of lakes. Yeah. The shore of a lake is, you know, all the rocks and, oh, yeah. and they find a, the tooth. crown of a tooth. Yeah. Like, Amazing. That's, that's crazy. Well, because everything was there. So right. we spent a lot of time looking. Right. A little more, uh, I mean, it's not like you go to, like I go to the lake and I, I'm not really looking for anything other than a snake or something. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. So on this evidence alone, just the crown matching her dental records, the Connecticut State Medical Examiner's Office issued a death certificate. On January 13th, 1987. Homicide. Yep. Actually, here's a picture of him being taken into custody and yep. him sitting on the stand. Mm -hmm. um, Richard's immediately arrested. And in preparation for trial, state medical examiner H. Wayne Carver obtained a pig carcass and fed it through a wood chipper. Can you imagine being a part of that trial? No. And And you know that this man put his wife through a wood chip and they bring out a dead pig and they're like, we're going yep, to feed it through the chipper. Show you what it looks like. Oh, yeah. Good Lord. Um, the shape of and marks on the pig's bone chips after this process was complete were similar in shape to the bone fragments they found on the shore mm -hmm. that they believe yeah. belonged to hell. And this strengthened the hypothesis that Richard had used a wood chipper to dispose of his wife's body. It's insane to me. Yeah. So uh, Richard Kraft's murder trial began on May or in May 1988 in New London, where it was moved due to extensive local publicity. Yes, I can imagine. I they, yeah, they could, probably couldn't handle the. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine the amount C of news? C CNN had too many trucks there. <laughs> right. The case went to the jury after 54 days. So the trial lasted almost yeah. two months. Yeah. On July 15th, 1988, the 17th day of jury deliberations. So the jury is deliberating for over two weeks Jesus. on this. A single juror, the only juror in favor of an acquittal. So you had one juror that was like, he didn't do it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Refused to continue with the deliberations and the judge declared a mistrial. Mistrial. Had to. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, but at least they could retry him. A second trial in Norwalk ended in a, in a guilty verdict on November 21st, 1989. Yeah. Like, come on, people. Richard was sentenced to serve 50 years in prison. On January 30th, 2020, so just four years ago, Richard was released from prison and sent uh, to live in, at a halfway house in Bridgeport. Yeah. Richard was released early because of statutory good time, which yeah. allows sentences to be shortened for good behavior. Correct. Uh, Kraft's maximum release date was listed by the State Department of Correction as August 1st, 2020. He should have done his 50. I hate that stupid right. good credit crap. Right. Give him the 50 years. Make him do 50. There are just so many factors that go into it's like. so stupid, like, though. Why can't a sentence just be a sentence? Yeah. I mean, this person is gone. Forever. So he should be put away forever. Exactly. Yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. He should go through a wood chipper, too. Alive. Yikes. Yeah. Feet first. So, interestingly, have you ever seen the movie Fargo? Oh, yes. Love it. I love that movie so much. I need to watch it. It's been a couple of years. It's time to watch it again. But the... Uh, Did the you watch the new seasons? Like the rate, like the actual... TV show part of it? Wait, there's a TV show? Dude, there's like, yeah, oh my God, dude. I had no idea. Yeah. Like, there's literally a series, like yeah. Fargo? Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to check that out. I yeah. know what I'm doing tonight when we're done. Yep. Uh, there's like uh, three or four seasons. Dang. How? Do, what is it on? What, like? Netflix, I believe. I think that's what we saw. Is it just, is it called Fargo, or is it called something obscure, like the Yellow River, and we're all supposed to know that has to do with... No, it's Fargo, I, I believe. Okay, I'll have to check it out. I'll yeah. check it out. It's it, it's it's good. Is it just like the movie? No. 
kind of goes off of it, but it all kind of relates to Fargo. Is it based on anything that happens in the yeah, movie? It's, yeah. Like the movie's the jumping point kind of thing? Or is it a prequel? No, it's, no. I mean, the movie itself is just its own story. Then there's other things that happen that are part of this. Okay, I got you. This outfit. I got you. Okay. Out of different areas. Okay. It's good, though. After I can tell you're not trying to blow anything. Yeah, it's. it's I, I hate to hate to give it away. I'll have to check it out. So the special edition DVD of the 1996 film Fargo. Yeah, awesome. Contains a statement that the film was inspired by the craft case, uh, particularly the very end of the film. Yeah, where a character played by Steve Buscemi is killed and his body's put through a wood chipper. Which that it's kind of a big finale. Sorry yeah. if I'm ruining it for anybody, but you can see his foot. Yeah, he's getting jammed into a. It's kind of how that movie comes to a, a close. But um, yeah, that's Richard Crafts. That's crazy. I, You know, when I was researching, you know, I've heard this before, but like the first time I came across the Richard Crafts story, I kind of started to read it and I was like, eh, you know, mm -hmm. but because I didn't make it to the, the end. Yeah. And then I saw this thing on the special edition DVD of Fargo, this whole wood chipper thing is based on, that uh, case. Yeah. And then I went back and read the whole case. I was like, oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> Look. Yeah. Crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Yep. yeah. You know what time it is, Mike? Oh. Oh, shit. Here we go. It's on. It's on. <laughs> and guess what? We got people to I play, know, Mike. I know, I know. We got people signing up. Right. Yes. God, I hope I don't spend murder. So, <laughs> Jesus. Death. Death. Spin death. Well, same thing. All right. So for those of you that have been signing up, it's awesome to see those submissions come yes. in. Uh, with this being a special season finale episode, we're going to do two rounds with two different players. Okay. So if your name is not being called, be patient. We will, you know, your name stays in the bucket for all time. So I'm sure in season two, you still have the possibility to be drawn. That's right. So, yep. and if you'd like to sign up to play the Wheel of Death, Follow the QR code on your screen or go to twomurdermorons.com and you'll see the little sign-up form there. Yep. And you can get your name in the bucket of doom. And if you're on the current list right now, don't fret. We'll get you next season. Yeah, we will. We will. All right, you want to do the honors? Yeah. Draw the first one. Yep. Who we got? Who we got? Laura Knight. Laura Knight. All right, we'll get Laura Knight on the phone here. Yep. And we'll spin the wheel of death. There we go. All right. Please welcome to the show, Laura Knight. Laura, hello. How are you doing? Hey, Laura. I'm doing Hi, Mike. Hi, Andy. <laughs> hey, where are you calling us from today? We're in Dollywood. You're in Dollywood in Pigeon Forge? Yep. Oh, that place is awesome. Have you ever been there? Yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. That place the is awesome. Yeah. Which are you staying at an actual Dolly Hotel resort? We're at Heart Song, the newest one. Oh, okay. But it's been raining, it? so we haven't really gone out and looked around that much. Oh, that stinks. That sucks. Well, hopefully, are you there for mm -hmm. a while? Okay. Well, hopefully, you'll yeah get some good weather. Yeah, get some good weather in there and get to explore Pigeon Forge and Gallenberg a yeah. little bit. Yep. You guys are going to go in the National Park? Like in, uh, uh, if it's not raining, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because our son told us it's a great ride. Wow. Oh yeah, it is beautiful. Hmm. Just driving through is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Laura. Just, just watch out for the bears. Take bear spray. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Laura. Um, we're we're gonna spin the wheel here for you. So um just to give a little recap on the wheel, we have four spots that say death, which means obviously you don't get anything. Yeah. Um, but sure. besides that, we've got t-shirts, there's hoodies, there's hats, there's free memberships to our buy me a coffee, um, membership program. So you okay. get to pick, do you want me or do you want Mike to spin the wheel? Who has the better <laughs> record? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Andy, I, yeah, I think statistically I do right now. Yeah. Okay. I'll try I'll see them too. Maybe I'll do better. <laughs> oh, you want Mike's Mike? Mike? What? Yeah. Nice. Holy cow. God, I'm pretty good on this. <laughs> Stressed out now. All right. Oh, no. All right. Let's give it. You want him just to give it all he's got? Yes. Okay. Ready? 
There we go. Oh, that would have oh, good one. Oh, 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 wait. Oh, dork pants level. Yeah. Buy me a coffee what? membership. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Yay. It almost hit death. It, it was close. It, yes. it came. I don't know if you can see on this angle that next step right there. Yeah. It was oh. death. Yeah. Cool. Well, we will get you hooked up with the free membership. And yep. thank you so much for calling in and playing Wheel of Death today. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Have fun in Tennessee. Yep. Have a good time. Well. <laughs> okay. Right. Bye. 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 All right. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations to the Lord. She your, got, yeah, she got membership. Membership. Yeah. Which is awesome. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Hope you enjoy those bonus episodes. Good gift. So will you will you do the honors and hold the I feel like oh, I yeah, should you draw this draw. name. Yeah, you should draw, draw the one. second one. Yep. Okay. All right. Who we got? Who we got? Who we got? Justin Kaufman. All right, we'll get Justin on the line and we'll spin the wheel of death again. Okay. All right, everybody, please welcome to the show Justin. What's up, man? How you doing? Good, you guys. We're, hey, we're, we're good. Doing good. Where yeah. are you calling from, man? Uh, rural Pennsylvania, middle rural nowhere. Pennsylvania, like Amish country, Pennsylvania. I mean, my neighbors are Amish, but not quite Lancaster area. Oh, damn. Okay. Okay. So you live in the sexual towns. The, <laughs> the what? Names <laughs> up there. Oh, yeah. it was like what? what? There's sexual towns. Yeah, what does that even well, mean? Names. Okay, I get it. Yeah. Well, Justin, you ready to play the Wheel of Death? Absolutely. All right, sweet. So on our wheel here, we've got four spots in red, and those are your death spots. So you don't want to hit one of those. Except we're going to make an exception because today is our season finale. Season one finale. We're going to do spin till you win. So don't fret too much if you land on a death. But besides that, we've got our hats, hoodies, shirts, free buy, buy me a coffee memberships. Am I missing anything? Oh, we've got the Wheel of Death t-shirt. Death t-shirt. Only way to win it is landing on the one spot. Yep. Um, so who do you want to spin? I know neither of us have a good track record at this point, but you know, it's all, it's all in who you choose with this. I'd go with Andy. I think I, I got to go with Andy, put my life in your hands again. Yeah. There okay. You go. Yes, yes. I'm pumped. All right. Do you just want me to go like as hard as I can kind of spin or you want me to give it like a half? Oh, spin? absolutely. Okay. Hard as we can. As hard as you can. <laughs> you know how I like it. Oh wow! Whoa! Whoa. Oh, oh, Justin, hello. I wonder why the rule made it. <laughs> Here we go. What we got? What we got? What we got? Uh oh, we're gonna win something. Wheel of Death T-shirt, dude. There you go. Second you're, one. You're Perfect. gonna be one of two people in the entire world that has that shirt. Yep. Hopefully, people out here in rural PA know what who will ask what it is. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I said it's cool. The only one of two people in the world, but out of our fifty listeners, that. Really, those odds aren't that great. Yeah. Four um, <laughs> percent. Right. Yeah, yeah, roughly. Well, we will uh we'll get that mailed out to you, man. Like you should get it here in about a week. Outstanding. I appreciate it. All right, thanks, buddy. Thanks for calling in and playing Wheel of Death. Yep. Thank you. All right, absolutely. Thank you. All right, see ya. All right, so congratulations again. Yep. Just another winner. Another winner. Wheel of Death shirt. I know. Those things are awesome. awesome too. Don't we owe each other Wheel of Death shirts? Yeah, probably. Didn't we spin? Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, you, you know what's so funny about that guy? What's up? He looks like somebody I know. Does he? Does, dude, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man. Usually it's the criminals. Yeah, but this guy looks like somebody I know. But this was the first time I was like. Yeah, I was like, holy cow, he looks like a guy we used to work with. At first, I thought it was a buddy that like lied about his name. Yeah. So like, it'd be a surprise. Cause yeah. I don't know. It's crazy. I almost, I, yeah, because I was just like, that's why I was kind of like, you know. <laughs> I hesitant? Like, yeah. I was like. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Uh, maybe not. Nope. Oh, yeah. It's funny. Yeah. I didn't know if you caught it or not. So congrats to both Justin and Laura. Laura. Thanks yeah. again. And again, scan that QR code on your screen. It will get you. We'll, we'll get you. Let's get some more participants in the yes. bucket. Yep. All right. What else we got to tell people? Oh, merch store. Yep. If you want to support the show. Please. Please. Um, please. Check out our merch store. Hats, hoodies, underwear. Yeah. You name it. Coffee uh, cup. Puzzles. Yeah. All kinds of. Yeah. Coffee cup. Yep, coffee cup. They're great in the microwave, too. They are. Mike's yep. wearing the hat. Yep, Very stylish. The hat. Trucker yep. style hat. Yep, and he's got the shirt. Mm hmm. And the underwear. Oh, man, we're like loaded up today on 2MM merch. Yeah, we are. But uh, head to our website, tumorwarrens.com. You'll find our merch store there. You can scan the uh, QR code here on your screen. We greatly appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. What else What else are we talking about? Mm. It's, our, it's our big season one finale, man. It's a finale. We're done. Uh, we got to go out with a bang. Man, 12 episodes. 12. Well, and how many? Well, we did the bonus too. Yeah. So that's 
I think there's 10 of the 11 so far, maybe. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, we've done yeah, like 24 episodes yeah. of the show. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. I'm excited for next season, man. Yeah. We got some plans. I got some plans. This this may look a little different when we come back. Yeah. Around us, maybe. Okay. Hint, right. hint, nudge, nudge. Going to change things around. Okay. A little bit. Yeah. All right. Cool. But we've got a, uh, we've got a, sh- it's the world premiere of the season two trailer. Yes, right. I love. Oh yeah, I love how I make such a big deal about these trailers, and they're just these short little like. Oh, so it's, uh, they're cool. That's that's true. You put you put a lot of work into it. I try. Yeah. I try. I try yeah. to get better every time. Yeah. So let's let's play it right so now. Let's, let's get some more uh, people to buy some merch and sign up as a member. <laughs> yeah. That good stuff. <laughs> You're all about selling stuff. Oh, dude, there's a lot that goes into this stuff, man. Just trying to you know trying it's to get true. You know, maybe. Hope us out a little bit. We appreciate all the support everyone's given so far. Yeah. Ho- hopefully we'll get more. Hope. But uh, before our outro, let's show them the uh, season two trailer. Let's do it. So we'll see you guys next season. Next season. Enjoy the trailer and uh, see you soon. See ya. Twelve thrilling new episodes. On today's episode, let's go for it. Six new bonus episodes. Greatly appreciate your support. Eighteen new rounds of the Wheel of Death. Yes! Two morons Mm -hmm. who both got more moron er. Two Murder Morons True Crime Podcast. Season 2 premieres July 3rd at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're one of those people who will watch and listen through all of our warnings about adult language and content and then leave a bad review because your feelings are traumatized by the way we speak while presenting our podcast, don't tune in. See the rest of you July 3rd.